inheritance and their owners, it's me, Bea Scilab, and today we're going to be exploring a wasp juice shop. So let's get right into it. First off, why do you want to even learn this? Well, if you learn cross-site scripting, you can use it for bug bounties, CTFs, and during penetration tests. But remember, don't hack anything you don't own or have permission to hack. Let's start by just exploring Juice Shop. Click around, see what you can find, and create a fake account. But remember to use a fake email because it's not a real website. Now that you've gone through, created a fake email, we're going to find the scoreboard. Since OWASP Juice Shop is a giant CTF, of course there has to be a scoreboard, but it's hidden. So see if you can find it. In a few minutes, I'll give you a hint. Now for the first hint, you could try to guess the URL. That's called enumeration. This can be automated with hacking tools like Durbusters. Or you could look at the page source code. By going to the dots menu, more tools, developers tools, and then go into the source tab. And in a minute, I'll be walking you through the solution. And now for the solution. Let's do this part together. Now that we're in the Sources tab, let's click on this little button so we can make it readable. Next, we'll press Control F for Find and type in Score. After that, look for the fourth score and it should say Path, semicolon, double quote, score, dashboard, double quote. Hmm, this is interesting. Scoreboard pond. Now that we know where scoreboard is, we go up to the top, and right there, we type in score dashboard. And ta-da, you found the scoreboard. Congratulations. Now that we've found the scoreboard, let's explore it. Some challenges have a little graduate cap next to them. That leads you to an interactive walkthrough so you can learn at home. But let's do the privacy policy challenge together. Great, you are logged in. Now open the account menu. So let's open this up. Open the privacy and security submenu and click, click privacy policy. Okay, let's click on that. Super easy. Yep, you successfully solved a challenge. Privacy policy. Okay, it shows their privacy policies. Got that. And that's it. So as you can tell, the walkthroughs are super easy. Often, developers accidentally leave files exposed to the internet. These files can contain sensitive data. So let's buy something. First, we need to click on OWASP Juice Shop over here. And let's buy some banana juice. I don't even know how they make banana juice, but I guess we'll try it out. Now we'll go to our basket and check out. We'll add a new address and pick a country, the U.S. We'll add just a fake name. We'll add a fake number, a zip code, an address like Sesame Street. And then a city and a state. We'll 
submit that. We'll select our address. We'll continue. And we'll do one day delivery because I really want my banana juice right now. And we'll hit continue. Now we'll add a new card. And pick a name. And a card number. We'll pick a month, the fifth, a year, and submit. We'll choose this credit card and continue. And now we'll pay and order. Ta-da! Let's check out our order summary now. Print out order. Hmm. What's this? FTP. Let's remove this and see what we can find. Hmm. Seems to be some files. What's this? Acquisitions MD. We'll click on that. This document is confidential. Do not distribute. Hmm. Wow. I guess we found their secret files. Now if we go back to OWASP juice shop, we'll see that we won. That was pretty cool. But let's try a new type of attack called cross-site scripting. What is cross-site scripting, you may ask? OWASP describes cross-site scripting as Cross-site scripting attacks are a type of injection in which malicious scripts are injected into otherwise trusted websites. Cross-site scripting attacks occur when an attacker uses a web application to send malicious code, gener generally in the form of a browser-side script, to a different end user. Flaws that allow these attacks to succeed are quite widespread and occur anywhere a web application uses input from a user within the output it generates without validating or encoding it. To put all of what I just said more simply, I'll give you a little example. Let's say you are Alice and there is a website you want to attack so you can find out all of the user's real names and passwords. Inside of your profile questionnaire, you put in, I love cats, they're so cute, to the question, what is your favorite animal? Then, you put in your cross-site scripting attack, as shown in orange here. You may be thinking that people are going to go on her profile and see the attack, but the corner braces make it so that the browser hides the code. This script leads the unsuspecting victim to Alice's evil site where it steals their authentication cookies. There are three different types of cross-site scripting. There's DOM cross-site scripting, reflected, and stored cross-site scripting. First off, we have DOM cross-site scripting. DOM stands for Document Object Model. DOM cross-site scripting is possible if the web application writes data without proper sanitization. Now, let's test to see if we can try a DOM cross-site scripting attack. First, over here, we'll search for OWASP. Then this will pop up. Now, let's try searching for corner brace H1, corner brace OWASP. The H1 is a HTML tag for a heading. And after you press enter, you'll see the results just show OWASP, meaning that the page processed the HTML tag. That also means that we can try a real attack. Now, let's try an iframe DOM cross 
website scripting attack. In the search bar, we're going to search for corner brace, iframe space, src, equal sign, double quote, javascript, colon, alert, parenthesis, single quote, cross-site scripting, single quote, parenthesis, and double quote, and then another corner brace. After we press enter, you'll get an alert that says cross-site scripting. And there you go. You just solved another challenge. Thanks everyone for following along, and I hope that you continue to try more challenges on OWASP Juice Shop. Bye bye!